Okay, so part two of kind of the endurance um, and, and, and breathing or respiration and how it can affect us. Um, let's, let's just take a look at the, one of, one of the key underlying factors, um, that we see as a major problem and coming back, going back to the last video, we were talking about CO2 and it coming out and being in control of that to maintain better aerobic metabolism because that makes us more efficient long-term. We move into developing better aerobic efficiency. So how will we go about that? Two, two ways that we largely could use, and there's many others, but we'll get into two basic fundamental ways that if you can establish a practice within these will affect you incredibly with what you're doing. Um, it, and it doesn't matter the sport, really. It really doesn't. Um, but these two things can be implemented and can help develop better aerobic efficiency. One would be better CO2 tolerance. Simple. That's it's simple. We've got a CO2 tolerance on power, speed, endurance under the um, uh, breathing resources page, which is under learn um, up on the tab. And that can give you a clear cut indicator of the better that gets, the more efficient you're going to be or the, the less uh, breathing you actually need to do, making you actually more um, efficient aerobically. So two understanding respiration control. Um, this is a, a, a more detailed process to that, but let's jump over here real quick and take a look at how we can play with these things, all right? Or the, the, the bigger picture of those two things. All right, so point one, breath practice, all right? This is non-working. This is the, the simp simple way of, of, of playing with this and having an actual breath, breath practice where you're not working out, right? And, and we can do this working out too, and we'll get to that, right? But is some simple cadian cadence and apnea uh, exercises. Those would encompass for the more detailed language artists of yoga, pranayama, and the free diving world apnea. So we're using a cadence rhythm to develop CO2 following a long-term or, or breath cycle, a longer breath cycle and following through with that. And then apnea, which would be a longer breath cycle, but working on more, uh, more of the breath hold type stuff, right? And getting better at that stuff. That will by and large help develop a much better CO2 tolerance from what we found and what we see, which is also why they've been used in practices that are thousands of years old or even a hundred years old with like free diving, right? Uh, respiration control. This plays into the working realm or working and, you know, going and trying to d develop better aerobic efficiency, no matter where you're at, because you could be at a very low heart rate and be absolutely unequivocally 100% aerobically inefficient. You could be burning more carbohydrate because you are not controlling or you're not in control of your breathing, right? And so not being in control of that can have us offloading more CO2 than necessary, which can trigger more sympathetic dominance, which can trigger the metabolism to actually up ramp and burn more carbohydrate than necessary. So First and foremost, understanding our gear system, the gears. This is on power, speed, endurance. We have a program designed for this. Um, it, it is absolutely paramount to understanding if you actually want to get better at really figuring out how to use your breathing. And it's not just about nasal breathing, which is one of the big, you know, um, uh, I guess, problems people see with this is, is, you know, oh, nasal breathing isn't for everybody. Y yeah, it is. Your nose is designed to actually work with your respiratory system. And understanding how the, a gearing system and development work with that is paramount. And so understanding how to gear with that and transitioning into some mouth breathing towards the higher gears is critical. Um, secondarily, specific cadence development within rate perceived exertion. So understanding a rate, you know, how intense I'm going, whether I'm using heart rate or not, um, I, I don't like to prescribe with heart rate too much, but using controlled respiration or patterns within that, meaning if I've got a five second window to be 
going through a full breath cycle. That means in and out within five seconds, or maybe that's six seconds, or maybe that's 10 seconds, depending on what we're trying to develop and at the intensities we're trying to develop it. But this can help with development of not only CO2 tolerance, but also aerobic um, efficiency and what we're trying to uh, work with within a specific uh, exertion or you know, rate perceived exertion. Um, the third thing on respiration control would be hypoxia or hypoxic work. So I'm actually holding my breath, whether on an inhale or an exhale, and actually trying to elicit a, a higher or more stressed response to not having, not being able to offload that carbon dioxide or CO2 and getting that stress response up and develop, therefore developing a more accurate or not accurate, a, a, a more, a higher level of um, CO2 tolerance, especially within working capacity, which actually can help make me or develop me for uh, better aerobic efficiency long-term at higher uh, exertion levels. So hope that helps.